Hi, I'm Tim Zacharias with Cougar USA and your host of Building Value. We're in Pasadena today at the Spyrex Sarco Training Lab, and my guest is Matt Jenny, Area Sales Manager for Spyrex Sarco. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much, Tim. Yeah, really excited about today's show. We have awesome background here. Uh, we're going to be talking about this training facility and the classes that we will be able to offer in partnership with uh, Spyrex Sarco. Also going to be covering some design resources and ways that we can optimize your steam system. On Building Value, we go behind the scenes of building operations to showcase the people and products that make buildings work and the value they bring to the community. So can you tell me about where you grew up? I grew up in uh, Massachusetts, actually, Cape Cod. Nice. And um, grew up there until I was about I don't know, 12 years old, moved to Michigan. Okay. Then moved from Michigan to Louisiana. Went to school in Louisiana, finished up, and then um, moved into Texas. Yeah. I was going to say, I was a little surprised to hear Massachusetts because I would say of all the places that you live, Louisiana's had the, <laughs> the strongest it, impact. It's, it's got a little accent going there, but yeah. it's, uh, I'm confused. I have the Texas accent sometimes and a Louisiana sometimes. There you go. I think everybody in, in kind of southeast Texas, it all kind of bleeds together a little bleeds bit. Bleeds together, yeah. You're correct. <laughs> no doubt. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, awesome. So, how did you, what did, what did you end up doing after high school? I uh, went to college. At McNeese State, and then moved to Texas. Um, was it 1986? I guess the economy was just—it was dismal. So yeah. um, went to work at Randall's. Okay. Nice. Uh, did the produce for a while, and then finally got a call from a um, independent rep that sold steam products and. Uh, humidifiers and coils and things of that nature. So I went to work for them. And I actually started in the business with your dad. So yeah, I was gonna say it's actually a very similar story to how my dad got in. Is exactly. He, was, he worked at a deli at uh, Tom Thumb. You know, Randall's kind of equivalent up there in Dallas. And so uh, yeah, that's wild. Similar paths. No, it is similar. He uh, was actually a guy that trained me in the commercial industry as far as uh, we did steam prep surveys together. And you know, he's always been big in that business. So mm -hmm. it was. Uh, Huge help to have someone with that knowledge, you know, work with you. Absolutely. Mr. Steam, right? Yeah, Mr. Steam. <laughs> yeah. He calls himself Mr. Steam. I call myself Dr. Steam. There you go. <laughs> Uh-oh, we got a McSteamy, McDreamy thing going here. So uh, how did you end up with, at uh, at Sarco, Spark Sarco? I had uh, been in this business for about 30 years, and um, opportunity came up with Spyrex. So um, I decided that going to work for a manufacturer instead of an independent rep was something I'd like to uh, work through and see how that um, how that played out. It's um, you know, Spark Sarco is the largest steam manufacturer in the world as far as products and mm -hmm. steam specialty items. So um, that's how I got over into Spyrex. It's uh, been a fantastic experience with uh, great people to work for and. Um, you know, a large product line diversified. Absolutely. And, yeah. and what's your role at Sarco? I'm the area sales manager for the Texas Gulf Coast and Louisiana. Perfect. Yeah. There you go. Time back to those roots. <laughs> Time back to the roots, going back to Louisiana. Yeah. Nice. It's so, you know, we talked about Sarco having, being a global company, this massive uh, product offering. You know, what, I guess what would be what would you say is is kind of the the heart of the Sarco line, or what what are some of the the things that you feel Sarco does best? Well, you know, when you look at uh, companies like Spyrex, the first thing that I normally do in training classes is, what do you know Spyrex for? And people raise their hand, and say steam traps. Yep. I said, well, you know, steam traps is one line item. You know, we have uh, control valves, clean steam generators, desuperheaters. Uh, it's such a broad base of products, but, uh, you know, our core products, of course, have always been steam traps, um, but we have a diversified line of mm -hmm. pressure-powered pumps, um, electric condensate pumps, you know, exhaust heads. Um, the, the line is just so broad, but, you know, our core products have always been based upon, you know, temperature control, pressure controls. Um, yep condensate recovery so we look to help you optimize your system 
and we have different components to do so. So really core products is one way someone could word it, but we're here to help you optimize your system with the products that we have. So pretty um, much everything after the boiler and now even kind of bringing in the, the electric boiler line. Um, yes, but uh, electric boiler lines coming out. Yeah, but you know, and and you mentioned the control being a big part of what y'all do, and I think that's why uh, Cougar and Sarco, Spark Sarcos have such a good long-standing relationship because we like to focus on the the control side and kind of the whole uh, system, and so being able to provide that whole range, you know, of all the steam specialties, including the controls, has been a great package for us. Yeah, that's it's one thing when you have a partner like Cougar where. You have guys that, um, you know, have been in the business for a long time and they sell a solution and a package system instead of a component. So a lot of difference in, you know, salespeople. But with Cougar, your experience over there, um, the guys you have working for you are looking for system solutions and a package, you know, solution for the customer, which is what we do at Spyrex. Absolutely. And I know... Spark Circle has a huge presence in the industrial market and, you know, obviously here in uh, Houston with all the uh, refineries and manufacturing that that's a big uh, footprint for y'all. But, you know, we're obviously focused on the commercial market. Sure. One of those biggest components being the Texas Medical Center, uh, having the district steam there. And obviously that's where we've focused a lot of our efforts, but it's been great to have a local partner. Uh, you know, we're here in uh, just on the east side of town in this great training facility, but to have somebody that close to be able to support uh, such a massive installation of steam has been great yeah we're, we're here to help train and this is a, a new facility here that we have and we're uh, starting it up to get it rolled out to the customers to have people like our distributors like cougar come in bring people in for training uh, this class will be open for uh, customers you know your engineers your contractors um you know, anybody in your hospitals, institutions, mm -hmm. uh, we concentrate, you know, heavily on that market along with pharmaceutical and food and Bev. Yep. So we have all the different products in this room to educate them and show them how to uh, install a properly pipe system and, um, you know, just different applications that we have in the room is going to guide them on how to optimize their system. Yeah, and it really is a systems approach in here. I mean, you have, and it this is. isn't, you know, a a static demo room. I mean, this is a live uh, steam environment. It's not fired up right now, but I mean, it is a, a live steam environment. So everything from the boiler, the distribution. Exactly. Uh, and even the end use here with the heat exchanger, traps, return, everything is, is set up in here. So you can get the whole the whole picture. We're, we're going to, when we start up, we'll start from the boiler out. So we generate our steam from the boiler. We'll go through separators, control valves, PRV valves, um, it'll roll out through a shell and tube exchanger. We have glass traps on the wall. We have uh, pressure powered pumps here. And <clears throat> as the room um, starts to grow, we'll add more uh, products to it. But for right now, we have everything piped as um, an optimized system so people can come in and, you know, and look at it, see how their system should be piped. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I, I like that whole systems approach and being able to see the piping, yeah. the installation of the heat exchangers, the traps, everything, uh, kind of all t tying it all together in a, you know, controllable environment where you can kind of show what happens when things aren't set up quite right and, yes. uh, <laughs> you know, how, how they should perform, <laughs> things like that. And then worst case, you know, the uh, up on the wall is the uh, the water hammer uh, visualization, which is really cool too. The, the water hammer um, display is fantastic to show you what happens when your pipe is undersized or, you're not draining your liquid out of your, your system. So in this case, we'll uh, demonstrate that as we go through classes and educate them on why you have water hammer and how it's formed and how to correct it, number yeah. one. Yeah, that's definitely uh, one of those things that sticks out. You know, an image at, at such a low pressure that that is happening in that pipe, uh, you know, to crank that up to actual operating pressure. Exactly. The potential for uh, catastrophic failure is definitely... Yes, okay. there's a lot of, you know, video out there on water hammer issues where, you know, it actually affects people's lives because yep. people end up dying from water hammer. So this is things that, you know, safety, number one, Spyrex is always, um, you know, big on safety. That's our number one goal. So when you come to this room, um, we do have a separate training room where we sit and present, but 
we have a glass wall where you walk into the training facility where people will be, you know, properly have PPE on. So we'll have, you know, you'll have uh, your safety glasses and the room's not really that loud, but we'll have hearing protection for people. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, number one thing is, is safety and then showing you how a steam system should actually operate. And, you know, we, we used to do these classes a lot with you all in the, the uh, last facility, unfortunately, had a little run in with. Uh, Hurricane Harvey there and exactly. uh, <laughs> had, to, <laughs> had to move uh, to this facility. But, uh, you know, that was, those were always really popular. We, we would schedule the classes with y'all, uh, typically plan for half day, even a full day, a uh, mixture of the classroom, uh, you know, kind of the theory and, and behind the uh, kind of the design of the distribution and, uh, and how all the components work together. And then to see it hands on, um, you know, in the next room, like you said, and, and actually have that kind of experiential learning i feel like you take a lot more away than that than yeah. just uh kind of yeah. watching some slides on you, uh, on a webinar you do when you get to see it live um i would have to say that you know i don't wish flooding on anyone but for us to be able to come to this new facility it's been a godsend for us because we have this beautiful facility now with you know new training lab uh with components that we actually needed we needed a bigger room sure so we have it now, and, um, you know, we're geared up and excited to have people over. I know COVID's kind of got us down, but we have a room that seats about 45 people. Uh, we can social distance, so we could probably put 20 people in here comfortably and social distance. So it's a great opportunity for, for Cougar and Spire Sarco to work together. Absolutely. Yeah, we're looking forward to it, uh, you know, as soon as we're able to have the classes here to, yes. you know, not, not just that, uh, doing the, the social distancing and stuff, but also, you know, when people are, uh, able to come out here, you know, different companies having different policies, things like that. But as soon as we're able to have the in-person classes, we, we definitely want to do that. And yeah. in the interim, we're going to be offering some virtual classes, yes. uh, which were, you know, have worked out pretty well, uh, for us over the last kind of, uh, six to nine months. Sure. But, uh, you know, we're going to be doing a mixture of, uh, kind of a, a little bit of our, our own spin on a webinar uh, with, with some people from Spark Sarco coming in and, and uh, training on specific topics, mm -hmm. but also want to come in here and do some uh, live, uh, you know, demonstrations of the different equipment, sure. things like that. So whether, you know, it's uh, COVID related or it's just general restrictions, not being able to make it out to a training class, we're going to try and, you know, get this information out to people the best we can. No, we'll, um, you know, as we go through the next, I think, three weeks with you, we're going to, you know, roll out uh, some information on steam traps, so general information, do's and don'ts, things of that nature, and then PRVs and control valves, and then heat exchanger packages, which a lot of people think of us as, hey, you know, you guys make steam traps, but as you can see in the background, we make heat exchanger pack packages, whether they're plate and frame or shell and tube, mm -hmm. and really the um, what makes us stand out from other manufacturers is our controls of the system, so... We have some really nice features on the package with our own control valves and SIMS technology that's beneficial to the client. So we're, we're excited about that and working with, um, you know, yourself to roll out education on heat exchanger packages. It's going to be fantastic for both of us. Absolutely. So since you brought it up, let's uh, let's talk a little <laughs> bit more about those. So, you know, what are, what are some of the applications that you're targeting with the, those packages? Well, we're looking at, you know, domestic hot water and building heat. So that's uh, and then process conditions, too. So sure. we're, we're looking at those type of applications. And um, what we like to look at is, you know, giving you a small footprint, um, giving you the controls. Uh, you know, we have our own ball valves and um panels and control valves and steam traps so it, it's something that um, we've worked very hard on and the heat exchanger packages are, are something that I don't know that a lot of people think of Spiric for heat exchanger packages which uh, when I came here you know the first thing I wanted to do was get out and train people on them mm -hmm. because uh, you know there's um, a lot of people that go shell and tube we have plate and frame and shell and tube so we can meet both of your demands on, as sure. far as that goes and you know we've we've had a lot of experience with the those packages being you know field built mm -hmm. and and uh you know some of the challenges being the physical installation sure. where the heat exchanger is where the control valve is and then you know where the the traps are and where the condensate is going so how, how does getting it as a package system like this 
uh, how is that an advantage over going to the field built? Well, the package system, you know, we can customize it to fit through doors if we need to. We can customize it as far as the height. So really, if there's restrictions there, um, you know, we'll get those restrictions mm -hmm. from whoever. They'll give us their d dimensions. We'll plug it into the program, and then we'll start building a package around that. Um, but pre-assembled, you know, already hydroed and tested, all you have to do is make a few connections to it, put your electric to it, uh, your condensate return, if it's not gravity-fed, things of that nature. So the, the hookups are minor. And sure. then when you get out in the field and, you know, a contractor's trying to assemble something off a drawing, well, a few things get missed sometimes. And then the package doesn't operate. But when it comes out on a skid, it's ready to install. It's, um, you know, been pre-tested and hydroed and everything. So you have peace of mind. Sure. Yeah. We, we like to, the, you know, water in, water out and power. Yeah, right. Exactly. The, you know, try make to, it, make it easy. The right? easy button. Yeah. And it's, you know, you get onto job sites, even if it's, if it's new construction or aftermarket, uh, you know, retrofit application, typically not ideal conditions to, to build something. I mean, you can see there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things going on in a small space. And so definitely yeah. can see the advantage of, of building that in a, you know, controlled environment, being able to test it, have the controls, um, that way you have that single source responsibility out in the field and, and know that it's going to be ready to go when it gets there. The, the package that you see though today is one that uh, we built for demonstration purposes. Normally they're a lot smaller in footprint, but we had to, um, we wanted to show you different applications within a package. So it's a little bit bigger. You know, we have pressure power pumps on there. We got control valves. We got, you know, Sims technology. We have different things on this package to show multiple different um, applications. So it's not just, hey, this is building heat and this is the package you're gonna get. Um, the footprint's a lot smaller on the packages that we normally build, but for this purpose and training, we wanted to put as much as we could on the one package to um, show and demonstrate to customers and educate them on different applications for hot water heating. Sure, and what what's not uh, shown here, but one of the new, uh, products that y'all have rolled out is the the easy heat yes. right and so you know typically on these heat exchanger applications you'd be modulating the steam coming into the heat exchanger um and, but with easy heat it's a little bit different setup right it, it's a little different setup because we have touch screen uh technology on it so the sims technology uh we'll still bring it in through a control valve but with sims you have touch screen so everything's right at your fingertips you don't have to guess you can Go in and set your temperatures. Um, it also talks to your cell phone. So if there's an issue, you're at a university, you're at a hospital, and they say, hey, we don't have any hot water, he can go in and look at his cell phone, say, okay, what's going on? Start trying to ramp up his temperatures and things of that nature. So, you know, there's different ways to control the package, which is fantastic. And, you know, when um, you, you get a lot of phone calls from people that are saying, hey, it's a university. We have no hot water, and all these kids are trying to take showers, right? Yeah. So he can look at his phone if he's at home and it's convenience and, and start seeing what's going on, trying to troubleshoot the system. So, yeah, we, we put some benefits together on um, the plate and frame packages and uh, fantastic package, though, just fantastic. And and on that one, I mean, you're you're not necessarily regulating the steam coming in, right? You're, no. You're, you're totally different uh, kind of school of thought there to regulate – the condensate going out instead, right, to maintain your temperature? Yeah. Well, the condensate um, going out is either one or two ways. Either we have a pressure power pump on mm -hmm. the outlet if we're lifting, right. so we need some way to lift it. So we use pressure power pumps, which uses uh, steam air or nitrogen to push low pressure condensate back to the return line. Uh, the other thing is, is if we're gravity fed, then we don't need the pressure power pump, so we just drain down. So there's different ways to move it. We need to get the condensate out of the exchanger to maintain heat transfer. But it, it, so this is just kind of a side question, though. I thought the easy the they were at, you were actually running it with the heat exchanger flooded. We can you can run it flooded, but normally you wouldn't run it flooded unless the application calls for it. Okay, because because when you're generating hot water, it's if it's just hot water and you generate hot water for showers and things of that mm -hmm. nature, you, you run it 
as dry as possible. Okay. Because I was under the impression that the control valve was on the outlet of the condensate and you're modulating the level of the condensate in the heat exchanger to maintain your temperature rather than modulating the, the steam coming in. Well, the control valve, you have a temperature control valve that will sense the hot water temperature on the outlet. Mm -hmm. And it'll modulate that. You normally don't stick the control valve on the outlet of the package unless you want to run a flooded state, which some applications do actually call for that. Okay. The so problem with running flooded state, though, is that you follow your tubes. You know, if you run a shell and tube, you have a tendency of that liquid building up, you know, calcium and mm -hmm. everything else on your tubes. So but wouldn't it be where we were, where, where the ones we were looking at were on um, plate and frame? Yeah, pr plate and frame. So we can run it flooded. Mm -hmm. You can run it, but when you say flooded, when you go to plate and frame, a little bit different than shell and tube. So sure. I've seen shell and tube with a control valve on the outlet side. Not a good application. Plate and frame, <laughs> different different situation because now you don't have uh, the calcium built up on the tubes. It's actually plates. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, we do run some of them flooded um, in that state. And then there's some that um, it just depends on the customer spec, though, at that point, okay. whether you're running it flooded or not. Not every um, plate and frame has a control valve on the outlet side. Right. Right, it was a new, kind of a new it, idea for me. I hadn't heard of it, heard of that, and that, so it was just kind of curious. I, I I didn't I haven't heard of it either. You know, when I look at like reboilers and exchangers and mm -hmm. refineries, the old school specification was to have a control valve on the outlet side, while new school is to have it upstream with temperature regulation to the heat exchanger to take uh, the temperature of the chest of the product that you're making mm -hmm. and then it modulates the valve. So when I first saw that, the first thing I thought was why are we backing up condensate into right. an exchanger? So yeah, there, but, but as I've, um, as I've learned a little bit more, as I've gone on, on exchangers for hot water, domestic heating and building heat is that they will flood a plate and frame. Um, but in my own mind, I always thought that, um, well, flooding any exchanger is not good because of what happens to the exchanger's performance. Right. But it doesn't seem to affect the plate and frame as much. So, Right. It's an interesting kind of, you know, you're changing the, the surface area for the heat transfer. Sure. Right? Rather than modulating the uh, steam flow over the whole I exactly. deal. So it's kind of a little bit different approach, but it's, I mean, it's nice to be able to do either or. But yeah, I would, I would agree, you know, more so in the, the plate and frame than, um, than the shell and tube. Yes. Would, would see that for no sure. No doubt. So, yeah, it's uh, you know, kind of a kind of a newer way of going about it, I guess. But uh, yeah. you know, we we with the kind of the way that the medical center is set up now, with with all of the uh, buildings decoupled from the primary loops, there's you know potential for these uh, a lot of these kind of applications. For oh, us, no for, doubt, with the they packages. they have a lot of older technology in the medical center, so. You know, as you bring in new technology, of course, it's a lot of time with, you know, your um, engineering design companies to mm -hmm. show them new technology. And then when they look at it, they're you know, a little hesitant at first. But as you explain it and show them how it works, um, you know, we've had fantastic success with these heat exchanger packages um, uh, over the, um, you know, my territory, especially we've done fantastic sales in them and um, clients really just love the the controllability of the package. Absolutely. So w we're not using, you know, conventional PRVs that uh, people, you know, have spring-loaded PRVs. We're using control valves. So the reaction of the control valve is a lot quicker. It's a tighter tolerance. So uh, it's, it's just been an overall uh, fantastic package for controls and, and helping people maintain their um their hot water so absolutely uh, you know the other thing i think that we've had success with recently and i know this is something that is really uh popular say in in the larger steam environments the industrial or uh, some of the process environments is doing uh the steam surveys and just kind of general sure. system ass uh, assessments so 
how how is the Sarco go about that? What what's your process for a, a steam trap survey? Well, the steam trap survey number one gives you a snapshot of what uh, what kind of shape your system's in. Uh, if you're not surveying your steam system, then you're wasting dollar figures as far as steam blowing through traps or a cold plug trap that's backing up condensate, creating water hammer, things of that nature. So when we go out and do a survey, we get a good snapshot of your steam system. Um, we record all the traps, tag all the traps. You get your locations. You know where they're, where they're at if they're on the second floor of the basement, mechanical rooms. You know, up in a ceiling, wherever they may be. You know, a hospital, <laughs> yeah. right? It's all over the it, place. They're all over the place. Wherever they could squeeze in a piece of pipe, they yep. put it in there. Um, so we'll take a total snapshot of that whole system, record it all. Uh, we have um, technology out now that um, a, a new program called Sims, where we actually put all this data into, and it's a re very clean report. So when we're done with the survey, we'll come back and present to the owner. You know, here's what your snapshot is. This is what you look like. Uh, this is where you have failed open traps or failed closed or they're operating, you know, um, in good uh, good conditions. And beyond that, we can take it to an assessment. So we'll give you the snapshot. And if they um, have issues like they're dumping condensate down a drain, you know, returning condensate brings back money. Absolutely. You're bringing your BTUs back to your boiler. You're not bringing in makeup water from the city. So it reduces your chemical costs, your makeup water cost, and then you return the condensate. So as we do these assessments, we look at, you know, the whole system, how you have everything run to your sterilizers, you know, your heat exchangers, are you dumping it down the drain? And then we come back, you know, with a, a payback for you. So... You know, we had a facility that was uh, returning about 15% of their condensate. We were like, well, you know, you guys should be at like 87%. So we went out and did an assessment and looked at how we could return the condensate. And, um, you know, the, the hospital that we did it for, is, they're like, if we can return 87% of our condensate, we're willing to make this dollar figure of an investment. So now we're going back and, uh, you know, working with them on the equipment selection and how to return the condensate. Yeah. I mean, and that's going to definitely have a, a payback for them. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So the, you know, that, that whole process, you know, initially kind of going in, tagging everything, like you said, and then taking it to the next step, being able to not only just say, hey, here's how it looks, but here's how you can make some improvements. Um, and, you know, whether it's returning more condensate to save money or maybe improving some of the controls or things like that, sure. um, ultimately they're going to come out with a, a kind of a plan to move forward and improve the system, right? Yeah, so on, on surveys, you know, we, we, as we go through it, do the survey and, and gather all the information, um, the surveys give you a really good snapshot of what your steam traps are doing and operating. And at the same time you're there, you're looking at, you know, really what they're dumping down the drain and mm -hmm. the condensate, things of that nature. So, you know, we come back with a, a, a dollar figure of loss. We come back with a payback form if they fix the, uh, the products that are failed. You know, we look at how they are controlling their heat exchanger packages. Are they PRV valves? Are they, you know, temperature control valves? Are, are, are they actually looking at going to control valves? Because I know a lot of... Uh, engineers that we deal with they like to default to the old prv valve and nothing against the prv valves but control valves are the way of the future they're they're, they're fast they're uh you know we've come out with a peak seat valve that uh, gives us a you know a tight shut off and we're promoting control valves more and more to engineering firms because of their reliability and the controllability sure you know yeah definitely and you know that's that's a you know that that whole steam trap survey process is definitely something that uh, we can work with y'all here locally. Sure. You know, to in, you know people in the med center or uh, definitely the institutions, universities, other places that have uh, the steam systems. You know we can uh, definitely work with y'all to to kind of most definitely be able to to offer that. And so, what would you say would be you know how often would would you want to 
have a, a survey done on a system? Like, what do you think is a good, you know, regimen to get on to, to kind of make sure the system's staying healthy? Well, once you do your first survey, you get a snapshot of your failure rate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if your failure rate is, you know, over 20%, then you should probably do it twice a year to bring that failure rate down. Um, when I look at what I call a gold star facility, I would say 5% failure rate okay. is, is very doable for facilities, depending on how many traps you have. So if you have, let's say you had 300 traps, uh, getting them well below 5%, fantastic. But really what I like to do is when I look at a system and I do the first survey, that tells me how often that survey needs to be done. So if you go in and you say, okay, look, you guys are at 12%. I would do a survey in six months after you fix these traps, get your snapshot, and then we can start maybe doing one once a year just to get you a snapshot of where where you're at. But when you look at surveys and facilities that have large amount of steam traps, like some of these industrial facilities, they'll have 16,000 steam traps. You know, how often should you do that? You know, and, uh, you know, so you go out, you get a snapshot of 16,000 traps, and you're saying, okay, you're at 27% failure that's a lot of steam loss, you know, especially at different pressures and different costs. So, you know, we normally average, you know, a thousand pounds an hour of steam at $5. Well, if gas prices go up like they are now, your natural gas price goes up, then your cost of steam goes up and people, um, you know, they get comfortable with low gas costs that are firing their boilers. But when they go up, that's when you really need to start looking at your surveys and start partnering with someone like Cougar to go out and look at the surveys, get a snapshot of your system. But uh, really, probably once a year is a good snapshot unless you um, look at their system and they're above a certain percentage of failed traps. Sure. And I mean, in, you know, beyond the money aspect, right, you're, you're also having these potential issues building up in the system that you can identify through the sure. survey and and take care of on a scheduled uh you know change or, or <laughs> upgrade rather than if you know getting to that uh you know uh emergency situation sure. where it's deciding when you're going to do the maintenance for you right yeah you mentioned water hammer so that's um you know when you're walking through facilities and you hear banging pipes normally you know when, when i see that it's uh I'm saying it's thermal shock because we're not draining the liquid. So we have liquid sitting, we're injecting steam, and then what happens is the steam collapses, you know, hits the liquid, then collapses, and then you get your banging going on in your pipes. So it's one thing that when you hear that, you're saying, okay, you have a potential for water hammer. You know, uh, it's like tunnels and things of that nature in universities. You know, you go down, you test traps through a tunnel. Um, you know, if they get water hammer in a tunnel, it, it's Nobody's got to know. No, and it's got to come out somewhere. So yep. if you're in a tunnel like they are in New York City or, you know, here in Houston, we have some tunnels. It, it's dangerous unless you're keeping up with your maintenance program to make sure those traps are function. Number one, and number two, not a lot of people like to go in the tunnel. So if you're in the <laughs> tunnel, you know, and, and you recognize a safety uh, issue, that's you know, report it, fix it, and you know, protect our lives. So that's Absolutely. most critical. Yeah. And, you know, I think the, um, there's been, I would say a push towards, uh, this more proactive maintenance and things like that with, with COVID and, and, you know, the hospital is not so much having, um, the reduced occupancy, but in some of the other buildings, um, you know, universities, things like that sure. might maybe a chance that, uh, with the reduced occupancy, that's a good time to go in and, and, um, use that downtime to, to do some of this stuff sure. and, and uh, identify some of those issues. So no doubt. Um, I, I agree with you hundred percent on that. The time to look for cost savings, you know, is now it's, you know, some of the universities a little slow with not so many people in there, but, um, you know, they seem to, um, still be going to school. There's p- yep. people still actively using hot water and showers and things of that nature. So it's a good time for us to go in and provide a solution for, you know, any kind of application they have or savings on, on their steam usage. Absolutely. So if we, if we pivot a little bit and, and kind of go, more on the front end uh, of the seam system design. You know, a lot of what we talked about it and what the training is geared towards kind of the installer or the end user. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that, you know, 
we've had a lot of consulting engineers come through uh, the training and there's a lot of discussion about the design of the system. Sure. So what, what kind of resources do, do y'all have available for the consulting engineer when they need to lay out a steam system? So when you look at Spyrex Arco, I think uh, a lot of people remember the red hookup book. Yep. It's famous. Yep. The red book it, and the blue book. So the red book and the blue book, they're famous. So you, you have your fluid dynamics where we, you know, we, we talk about fluids and how traps work. And then you have the red book, which is basically the engineering Bible, as I would call it. Uh, it has your hookups in the back, has all your steam tables and friction losses up front. Um, so that's one thing that you can look at. But if you go online to Spyrex uh, website and you look for calculators, you can do condensate paybacks. You can size steam traps, PRV valves. The, the things that we work with uh, directly with the engineering is control valves and heat exchanger packages. It's not something that we, we put out there on the web, but we're saying come to us. We have data sheets that you fill out. So we'll send you information data sheets to say, you know, here's information that I need on uh, heat exchanger packages, uh, information that I need on control valves. We have them for steam traps. Uh, we have them for flow meters. So another thing is, is, you know, we have a diversified line of flow meters. So we have all these information data sheets for you to, to fill out and send back to us. There's a couple things, like I said, that we don't put out online. But if you go to our website, we have calculators for a lot of different applications. Yeah, and I know, uh, you know, Scott and, and my dad have uh, worked with engineers for a long time. And now sure. we have Michael as well. But, you know, when they're going to work on a, uh, either a new project or adding on to an existing uh, steam system that uh, definitely we know that we can come to y'all for those resources to kind of help lay out sure. that system. And, yes. and, you know, we, we like to be in that position to help uh, lay out those systems and be able to identify any potential issues early on and, and maybe make some uh, suggestions on, on how to do the design. Um, and then it kind of extends a little bit further to the installing contractors, uh, you know, helping them lay out that pipe. Sure. Make, you know, doing site <laughs> visits, make sure that, that things get installed correctly because, you know, there's steam is uh, one of those things that sometimes people don't do all the time. And, you yes. know, it might be just long enough between the last job uh, where where there's a few, you know, small things in, in the grand scheme okay. of things. But if you, if you uh, you know, don't get yeah. those uh, just right, that uh, can have some issues with the steam system. I, I couldn't agree with you more because <laughs> when we talk to contractors, they say, Hey, you know, we haven't done a steam job in a long time and, you know, we could use some help. And that's where you have the experience of, you know, Scott and your dad, um, people that have been around for a while. They can go out in the field and identify these issues. Uh, that's what you really need to assist the contractor and the engineers on, you know, how a system should be piped. And not a lot of people have steam experience anymore. So it's good to have, uh, you know, resources like Cougar to go out and, and they can come look at a system for you and tell you, yeah, the do's and don'ts. And, yeah, that's not pipe right or it needs to be piped this way. So it's good to have uh, people like yourself involved early in the projects, the installations, the design, all that. It, it saves a lot of headaches down the road. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> you know, we, we like to be kind of proactive in that in that whole design process uh, to, to help make sure that that goes. Smoothly. Most definitely. So, you know, we're kind of, uh, you know, we covered a lot with uh, the training facility and some of the new products and, and uh, even some of these design resources. What, what would your advice be to somebody either that's kind of designing a steam system or somebody that's operating one uh, for, for what they might be able to do to, to make sure their system stays operating well or, or how to improve it? Well, for someone that's designing it, it's um, really to look at how they're, hooking things up or piping them, sure. you know, and sizing them, um, you know, they have a tendency to default to certain types of steam traps on applications and things of that nature. So there's newer technology out there. There's trap valve stations out there that condense the space of a steam trap. It's, you know, got a couple of ball valves. You bolt a trap to it, two bolt connectors. Um, that condenses a lot of space. It has a strainer built into mm -hmm. it, isolation valves. So you're not building a, a drip lake station per se that's 28 inches. You're building it, and it could be 5 inches. It could be 10 inches. Um, really customized. But, you know, as you look at designing it, there's a lot of new modular 
uh, excuse me, modular components sure. that shorten the dimensions up. Uh, so that's one thing to look at it. If if you're a, a guy running a steam system and you're in a university or a hospital, you know, you want to take a look at, you know, what health do you think your steam system's in? And, you know, going around and looking at, you know, leaky gate valves or water pouring out on the ground, um, those are all things that we can help you conserve and bring back into the system to add extra cost, um, you know, as far as your total overall scheme of what you spend on, on steam systems. So I, I think it's uh, critical to get a, a snapshot of your steam system with a steam trap survey, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we can come walk through the system with you and do a complete assessment and tell you not only where your traps are bad, but we can look at everything else in the system and make sure it's optimized. You know, if you're using control valves, dumping liquid down the drain, um, we look at, um, we have an assessment tool now that we can come out and just roll through the whole hospital with you or university or whatever type of facility you're in. So th those would be just some of the things that I would say, um, but mostly on the engineering side, I would say get with us early, uh, get with, you know, the people at Cougar, you know, and we can come over there and assist you with how everything needs to be piped and maybe roll out some modular design for you. Yeah, and I, th I think that's uh, you know great advice and the modular designs again being able to have that water in water out sure and uh, power and you know being able to drop that in with drawings onto the the drawings and then actually out in the field as well can kind of speed things up and uh, give you a little bit better control. It, it will, and you know we're we're doing a lot of webinars on LinkedIn, so mm -hmm. people sign up for them. You know uh, we're going to do some webinars with Cougar, but. Uh, Spyrex is uh, offering a lot of uh, different training on LinkedIn, yep. and, you know, they're free, so please, you know, get online, learn some things. Um, we have different uh, webinars, I think, at least once a month, so yep. opportunities to learn. Yeah, definitely. Spyrex Argo is a great resource for the training, and we're excited to be able to use this facility uh, more in person when it makes sense and, and kind of virtually in between <laughs> sure yeah no we're we're very excited we're, yeah. we were not so excited when COVID hit but we're excited right. that uh, we have this facility and you know we we want to further everyone's education and keep them up to date on on different designs that we have and how we can help you improve your steam systems the overall health of it and your hot water system absolutely well yeah. appreciate you uh letting us crash your your oh, training no. training we, room we today appreciate it. <laughs> turn, turn it into a little bit of a podcast studio here but uh no this is a great facility and and again really excited to uh start using it so matt again appreciate you uh coming on the show today no thank you for your time i appreciate you coming over absolutely sir and i uh, also want to thank everyone that was watching or listening today to this episode of building value and we hope to see you on the next one